One thing I can tell you is yeah. that a, and a company really has to deploy an AI first mentality. When okay. I say that, right. what, I, what I mean, what I personally mean by that is um, that they really have to. But what do the companies do in reaction to that? They train us as employees yeah. on how to handle that. True, true, well, I true. think companies should be training people on AI. Right. So I think this needs to change. One is this fear of job loss. You know, if I deploy it, I will automate it. Leaders have this if they have this thing of the more people work for me, the more powerful I am. So this it's not about people fear. So it's really about what are the results? Because today result driven charging. Yeah. Yeah. I think we talk a little bit about we say AI. But it's really still ROI. It's yeah. still return on investment. Supply chain procurement processes, despite the theory, same you know, source to procure, demand forecasting, inventory management, you know, logistics, TPL management. Yes, but you talk to any company as you work, they have a different cultures, they have different tools, they have different uh, uh, vertical nuances. Program called and it's still applicable today called CAP program, change acceleration mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. And the first three steps are creating a shared need, shaping a vision and mobilizing commitment. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody starts, leads off with the technology, mm -hmm. but you really gotta lead off with the people. Because the reason why most negotiations fail wow. is lack of preparation. Wow. When you see a team member do that, wow. you sit in that room and you say, boy, I better get looking at this stuff because it's very powerful. This video is brought to you by us, SCM Dujo. We provide awesome courses, guides, best practices for supply chain community. Hi folks, I am in Atlanta, Georgia, right? Because we're doing an SNOP conference where we met, I think two, three years ago almost in New York, Yes. right? So I'm with David, David Schultz. He is a, basically a CPO for various different organization. Right now he's been consulting, advising, using his experience of many years as a leader in procurement supply chain and how to deploy AI in supply chain, right? right. So today, David, and we have been experimenting of agenting AI and things like this. And today we're going to talk about that why supply chain leaders or businesses in general are so resistant in deploying AI. Despite there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of tech, there's a lot of, uh, let's call it marketing stuff happening. But when we go to the grounds and we see the organization, not much is happening, right? So David, just start from your basic vision of what AI can bring it in and why there's a resistance. What do you think? Sure. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me today. Um, we're working together on a workshop on SNOP here in the States. And I know um, uh, Dr. Ahmed has been traveling back and forth, you know, to uh, from the UK and Dubai and so on. So thank you for coming here. And, you know, I only had to make a four hour drive. It's very hot. It's very hot. Yeah, today. that's true. It feels like Dubai. Here, it is the way hot. Actually yeah. today. But uh, no, I appreciate, uh, you know, the, the collaboration that we're, we're having here and so on. And I think part of it is really designed to just help others sort of figure out how to embrace this whole era of change. Because I think uh, the speed of change now is extremely quick. Um, people have, uh, have spoken to me, have heard me say before that every year in this industry is almost like a dog year. Yeah. So every year is like seven years. So when you sit down with a supplier and they say, we're working on that on our roadmap, we'll have that in six months. To me, that's like three and a half years from now. True. And uh, I think it's all being displayed, you know, out in front of all of us with chat GPT and all that. They're about ready to come out with, uh, you know, version five and um, the, the information and the capabilities that are in that are uh, incredible. And yeah. every time they come out with a release, uh, hundreds of businesses go out of business, quite frankly. Exactly. Because of what they're adding. So we know already that the technology is there. It was not there two and a half years ago, to be very precise. But now the technology is there, yeah. easily available to most of the supply chain procurement leaders. Yeah. And through Copilot or through, you know, Gemini or, 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 you know, ChatGPT or OpenAI to start deploying or automating most of their workflows, at least within the organization and also with the supplier base, right? But when I talk to, you know, we are both in consulting advising space, and then we talk to the supply chain leader, they're still using Excel, email, send the RFQ, we're gonna get it back, you're gonna do the analysis, you're still doing Excel file, you know, demand forecasting, you still have a big forms to a supplier to send, write their supply information, come back, upload into, this is basic stuff. So why, which is, the tech is available, it's not expensive. Why this is not happening? Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm not sure that, um, I know all the magic answers, but one thing I can tell you is yeah. that a, and a company really has to deploy an AI first mentality. When okay. I say that, right. what, I, what I mean, what I personally mean by that is um, that they really have to understand and get themselves educated and embrace what's out there. Yeah. Uh, because I know a lot of folks 
are doing a lot on their own, let's say at home. Yeah. Maybe the company's not embracing it, right. but they're exploring a lot on their own. Right. And I really believe that people a lot of times will say that when they're in fear of something, they'll say, well, there's problems with it, there's challenges, it hallucinates or whatever. But I think a lot of that's an excuse because when this happens and it's happening this quickly, it is going to be uh, ubiquitous around the entire organization. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to just make a quick analogy People say it's dangerous. Well, email is dangerous. If you, <laughs> you know, if you click on uh, an unsuspecting or a phishing email, yeah, yeah, yeah. you could take the whole company down. I've sent so many wrong emails to suppliers and I didn't want to. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've, literally, I've sent one's yeah. uh, competition price to, a, to right. a competition supplier. I was in so much trouble. You, right. You're going to watch out for that reply to reply, yeah, yeah. reply no, all. Exactly. But what, what I was making a point that I was just making on that is that. Um, if you click on a phishing email, let's say, yeah. you can literally take the company systems down. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what do the companies do in reaction to that? They train us as employees yeah. on how to handle that. True, true. Well, true. I think companies should be training people on AI. That's right. And I think in many cases, companies are resisting it, even the training of it right now. Yeah. And I think they should be doing that yeah. to upskill the employees on how to use that. And, and that is why we have a course of uh, AI and procurement and supply chain digitalization is a course done by myself. It's basically enabling team to create awareness and desire and knowledge to adopt technology, which is going to implement technology. By no means, I think people are going to be out of the job. So I'm going to move to, in my view, two different, uh, I think, reasons to change. One is this fear of job loss. You know, if I deploy it, I will automate it. And if I, I live in this Middle East, Asian, you know, a lot, as you know, Dubai and, mid, and, and in Asia, I know people as well. And I think leaders have this, if, have this thing of the more people work for me, the more powerful I am. Yeah. So this, it's not about people fear that losing job. I'll come back to that later. But they want more people to work for them because within the organization, it gives them power. And if they start going towards, you know, automatic workflows, agentic workflows, of course, reducing time and hopefully people won't be as busy, it will, in my view, take the power away. Would you agree or don't agree? Yeah, I mean, I don't personally, it's not a matter of agreeing or disagreeing, but I don't, yeah. I don't think that's the goal, the end goal anymore. Yes. I think the end goal is really results-based, you know, issues. Yeah. So it's not really about, you, you even look at like SaaS now and data and so yeah. on, and companies are changing their business model. They're right. not looking at really charging from seats and th things like that. Oh, yeah. They're looking at results, charging, you know, looking at delivering results. It's almost like, you know, I used to work in the um, med device industry, Boston yeah. Scientific, some great companies in ConMed, and it's really about evidence-based medicine, they call yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really about what are the results, because today- Result-driven charging, yeah. Yeah, I think we talk a little bit about, we say AI, but it's really still ROI. It's yeah. still return on investment. What can help you get there? AI is one of the paths, yeah. but it's not the only path. Great, so actually we are in Atlanta and Dicey was here. And Dicey has a very interesting course for Esting Dujo, how to create a business case for technology implementation. That means we are teaching people. So if you want to implement any technology, how to create ROI, right? So, you know, are you, so what I say to people when I'm implementing any technology, including AI, you have to look into two things. The first thing, are you improving your internal efficiency? Second thing, are you improving customer experience, right? Or supplier experience. Right. Ideally, tech needs to do both. At least it has to do one. If you're not doing neither, you're not, you don't have in this case. And this is where we, I think, don't agree, right, sure. kind of thing. Because I hope you're right, but I don't think it's going to be 18 to 24 months. Because if you think about COVID, which was like four years ago, it bring in a lot of changes okay. and a lot of digitalization should have happened, still not happened. And unfortunately, in some cases, people have gone back to the old bad ways. But you know what I mean? Sure. So, but I am skeptical because the rate of change in the supply chain space, in my view experience, is much slower than if you take any other function, i.e. a sales and marketing function, right? If you take the, sure. the, the finance function, right? Even in some cases, manufacturing are, are go, going for, further, right? It could be because of you know leadership, lack of leadership buying, it could be lack of management buying, it could be lack of investment, right? It could be because of the combination of all, right? And because we are super busy in doing what would be busy, so unless the leaders of supply chain are consciously deciding that yes, we're gonna, in our 2026 project planning roadmap, we're gonna put a project which is gonna transform our procure to pay, our demand forecasting, we're gonna use you know, plant text and all that, or we're gonna basically digitalize the whole warehousing picking packing system, Unless that happens, you know, it will not going to be adopted because you've been into the position, right? 
ideas are there, tech is there. Unless you put a money aside or the project plan aside, it will not get executed. And 2026 is a few months away. So for me, therefore, 18 to 20 months is a pretty short lead time. Yeah. No, I think it is short. Again, the definition of you know, when's it going to be fully embraced or not. Yeah. But I believe personally, whether either of us is right or wrong, right. if it doesn't get that kind of uh, in, momentum, you know, in, momentum yeah. in the next 18 to 24 no. months, that those companies are going to really fall you behind. Are right. You are right. I really believe that. And, and, I, and I think it starts, like I said, at the right. top. Yeah. And I, a lot of times, hopefully, I mean, it's fun to go in now and yeah. do some presentations and you walk out and people think you're a magician, you're David Copperfield. Yeah, How'd yeah, you yeah. make that happen? But as they get more and more comfortable with it in their personal life, yeah. they start to see those use cases they can do maybe cool. at, at work. One final advice for supply chain leaders on technology or AI adoption. Yeah, I think on the AI adoption is it's not about pushing it down people's throats and saying, hey, this is the way it has to be done. Yeah. Um, I think you give people options. Yeah. And a lot of uh, organizations out there, even on the tech side, are, are doing sort of bespoke type um, options where you can put your own uh, processy, process involved. Yeah. You can uh, tick and tie it the way that you want to do it. And also give people the space to have some mistakes and failure yeah, yeah, so yeah. they can get back up and then do something you know, even better. So I think that's the part. I don't, I don't think you want to make it so that um, there's an issue with if, if somebody tries something and it doesn't work. I think you want to give folks a number of uh, times at bat to try to make this thing happen because I think you'll see that you and your teammates are going to come up with some really, really creative ideas. And there's going to be more opportunity for folks uh, outside of procurement and supply chain, either to move into different areas yeah. and other folks from other areas to move in as well. That's correct. Thank you for advice. Thanks for your yeah. time. Yeah, my right. pleasure. And I'm going to record one more episode with you on, on vendors, but hope you like this uh, content. I think some really gems you have given, four or five of them. We're probably going to make shorts of them as well. Thank you for your time. Okay. Hopefully you like that. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank yeah. you. Thank you.